One of the best ways that you can develop your skills as a software engineer and get hired is to build projects. I just made a video about four projects that you could build to put in a portfolio, but this often brings up a question and that question is, how do I know what to build and how do I generate my own project ideas? So today I wanted to talk about three ways that you can find your own project ideas and hopefully have a never ending stream of things to build. So let's get into it. So we're going to consider three areas in terms of generating project ideas. And those are your problems, your interests, and your skills. So let's go ahead and start with your problem. So I've made videos about this in the past and I basically recommend this for everybody. But whenever people ask me, how do I know what to build? I always say, try to solve your own problems or the problems of people close to you. There are a lot of reasons for this, but I think number Number one, it is the most motivating way that I've found to build projects because when you see code that you're writing tangibly making your life better or the lives of people that you care about, it just fires you up. It's fired me up and it makes me want to keep going. A few other reasons why this is powerful is number one, I think the app will naturally grow with time. So if you're solving someone's problem or you're solving your own problems, you will inevitably find more use cases or corner cases or more problems that are similar that you want to solve. And so that is kind of your feature set, right? And you don't want bloat, but it's a good way to find what else to build or if you want to add features to your app, what the additional features should be. Solving real problems also sets you on a path towards monetization. So I'm a big fan of the website Indie Hackers, which I've also talked about a bunch. And these are people who are making money from software that they've written. So starting with solving a problem ensures that you're providing value from the get go and probably that you're going to appeal to a niche audience, which is also important for small software apps and especially when you're starting out. When all said and done, I think solving real problems is the most motivating way to work on projects and that is important because you wanna keep going. And that brings us to our second point, which is to consider your interests. I found for myself that it's really hard to work on something that I'm not interested in. For me, this goes all the way back to elementary school. I've always found it hard to motivate to do stuff that I wasn't inherently motivated to do. And when it comes to building your own software projects, wanting to work on the project is pretty much a prerequisite because otherwise, you will just wanna quit and it will feel hard all the time. The opposite of being interested in building whatever project you're working on is checking a box. And I typically advise people against doing box checking. So if you're just building projects to have stuff to put in your portfolio in order to apply to jobs, I would stop and question, do I even really like this? My point is to use your nature to your advantage. So I think intrinsic motivation is very powerful. And so follow your interests, follow your passions, follow what you like, and it will be much easier to build. Naval Ravikant has this great quote where he says, you wanna be doing what looks like work to others and feels like play to you. And I think that definitely applies when it comes to building your portfolio and building projects. All right, and last, let's talk about your skills. So one common pitfall that I see is people trying to build something that is way too ambitious for their skill set. And I think that can be a good way to learn, but it also can be kind of overwhelming and maybe a little bit discouraging for people. So I would say build what you can, start with what you know how to do, add capabilities as you need them. So if you need to know how databases work, for example, then you can learn that as you need to. So just in time learning is what I'm advocating here. And like I said, in the last point, if you're going after your interests, then learning stuff in order to build your idea is going to feel like fun, hopefully, and it won't feel like, oh, I have to learn all these things just to build this project. So these ideas kind of build on each other, but if you do have to pick up new technologies, hopefully that's fun because it's going towards solving this problem. On that note, I would say learn new technologies in the process, but don't overwhelm yourself. Shipping something is motivating in my experience, even if it's something small. So focus on getting a version one or an MVP out the door as quick as possible, and you can and always iterate and add features later. At the end of the day, when you're combining a real problem that you have, something that you're interested in doing already, and skills that you have to solve this problem, the result is something pretty powerful and hopefully something that's fun for you to work on. So when you're brainstorming ideas, consider what kind of apps would be at the intersection of those three things. Thanks so much for watching to the end. If you're still here, you'd probably like the rest of my channel, which focuses on software engineering and self-employment. So consider subscribing. Regardless, thanks for being here. Remember, stay hungry, stay curious, and I'll see you in the next one.